They're injuring his right elbow. He will be starting this afternoon. That's the setting as the Denver Broncos go against the Baltimore Colts. You already know that. 81 is Don O'Meyer. Today's show produced by David Stern. Directed by Bob Levy. Technical director, Sal Nagita. Associate producer, David Neal. Associate director, Mary Buda. Coming up, Denver and Baltimore. Tuesday, how to eat like a... 6.30 on Channel 4. from Denver's Mile High Stadium. It's the Baltimore Colts versus the Denver Broncos. Today's game is brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation and your Dodge and Chrysler from the dealers. We're coming back strong with the cars and the value America wants. By Canon plain paper copiers. By Chronics makes it simple. By Schlitz, the master brewer's brew. Just one taste, and you'll know behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. And by GTE. GTE is telecommunications and a whole lot more. Welcome you back to Denver, Colorado. Marv Albert along with Jim Turner as you take a look at the AFC West. The Denver Broncos come in with a record of one and one. Opening by upsetting Oakland last Sunday, losing in Seattle. While the Baltimore Colts also one up and one down and they have been sky high and then suffered a demoralizing defeat at the hands of Buffalo last week. As you look at Mike Wood getting set to kick off for the Baltimore Colts, three deep Rob Lytle. Dave Preston, the man in the middle, is Wade Manning, and we're underway here at Mile High. So Manning staying right where he is, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And those of you who joined us here at NBC expecting to see the Seattle-Oakland game due to a uh, telephone line problem, which they are still trying to repair, you will stay with us uh, with the Baltimore Colts and the Denver Broncos until that problem is corrected, and we do apologize for the inconvenience. A look at the Denver backfield. Craig Morton, the quarterback, and the running backs, Rick Paros, first-year man out of Utah State, Dave Preston, a four-year pro out of Bowling Green as they line up in the eye. And Morton to throw on first down. He's got Preston. of tackle in on the stop. Mark, the Colts moved into a three-man line defense. is something they haven't done almost all year. Morton's the old veteran. He's going to check off. Uh, just a nice, nice play by Dave Preston. That offensive line anchored, anchored by the center, Billy Bryant. Howard and Glassick at the guards. Clark and Stutter. Stutter over at the right side because of the injured Claudie Miner. First down for the Denver Broncos at their 36, and Morton puts it up again. Steve Watson for another Denver first down. Hit down by the left side linebacker, Barry Krause, along with the right side linebacker, Mike Wood. Morton had all the time he wanted. I think we're seeing in Baltimore the youngest defensive round, and Craig's just going to pick him apart. Darrell Wilkerson getting the starting shot, Denell Thompson. Out of the lineup because of a knee injury. Barry Krause, Ed Smith, and Mike Woods are the linebackers. Had a tough time against Buffalo last week. Hatchet and Brazil in the corners, and Laird and Glasgow are the deep men. First down for the Denver Broncos at their 48-yard line. This is Rick Powers. Penalty marker is down. Mike Ozdowski, number 71, a four-year veteran out of Virginia, making the stop. This has been the Bronco problem for the first two league games. 14 penalties already this season. This is the 15th one. It just hurts them. Every time they mount a march down the field, always a penalty takes them back. And the referee, Chuck Heberling, marking it off. Holding. Oh. 
offense, number 64. First down. It's the center, Billy Bryan, called for the hold. You mentioned the many penalties suffered by the Broncos, Jim. They were called for only six last week, but each one was costly, particularly three in a last quarter drive. Especially when they were down for the scoring drive to win the game. First and 20, back at the Denver 38. Dave Preston. Just inside the 40, a pickup of about a yard and a half. So it'll be second and 18. At Baltimore front line, Herb Orvis out of Colorado University, Darrell Wilkerson, Bubba Green, Mike Ozdowski. The fans want to see some action, Marv. They haven't seen it, especially last week in Seattle. Coach Reeves says they've, they've had enough time to learn this offense. No more excuses. attempt there by Dave Preston. He does everything for the Broncos. Jim, that looked like a case of stick em, but that is not allowed this year. Well, they say it's not allowed. allowed. <laughs> we'll see how that holds up this year. <laughs> Once again, let me mention those of you who joined us expecting to see Seattle open due to a at and telephone line problem, which they are trying to correct. You are seeing the Baltimore Denver again. Diving attempt by the tight end, Jim Wright. It's waved off incomplete. He scooped it up. Sanders Shiver with the rush. And Morton had to rush the pass. As a result, Luke Prestridge will come on as Denver is forced upon. Craig was hit pretty hard, both those last two passes. Prestridge won the AFC punting title last year. Marv, he's, he's really going to be one of the better punters in the league. He likes to punt in this stadium. He's a big punter, and I think we'll see him bang this one out. He practices very hard to put the bow out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. He has been averaging, as you see, just under 40 yards per punt. Last week, averaged 42 yards against Seattle. Punting to Dave Shula, Kate Anderson. And again, a directional punt. Flag is down as Prestridge was run into. And the Broncos will get the call. There's no excuse for mistakes on special teams like that. It cost you the game. By the way, it was a nice punt at that by, by Luke Prestwich. Who was looking to angle it toward the sideline, and despite the hit that he took, was able to do just that. Let's take a look at it now. The man's coming in. Luke, Luke really lays it out nicely. They work on this day in and day out here in Denver. There he did. He knocked him down. You cannot touch the punter. Larry Brazil. Larry Brazil, who had a tough time at right quarterback last week, is hit with the penalty. And so the Broncos have a first down at the Baltimore 40-yard line. Three and a half minutes gone by, no score, first quarter. Second back coming through, Preston for short yarder. Blair, the strong safety. Dave told me before the game he was looking for a big game against this young defense. The Colts are very, very young. Maybe a little bit unorganized, especially last week after what Buffalo did to him. It is a second and five for Denver at the 35-yard line. Steve Watson to the left. David Moses right. And Egloff in as the second tight end. He is in motion. Another juggling act, but this time it cost. Barry Kraus, left side linebacker, three-year pro out of Alabama, wearing number 55, making the stop on Preston. He wasn't going to come up with a big one there, Marv, not at all. <laughs> and it's a loss on the play. The Broncos are definitely I making an attempt to open up their offense as opposed to the past two weeks. Broncos have not scored a point in the second half over the first two games. 
side as a third and eight at the 38. Oh. Morton going deep, and it's picked off. Bruce Lamb on the intercept. The pass intended for the tight end, Riley Odens. So the Baltimore Colts take possession. Craig had good protection. They were in the shotgun. He was going for Riley all the way. Riley was covered, Marv. I think we'll see the ball overthrown a little bit, but he has good protection, good time. Look at three, four men around the ball. Nice play by Bruce Laird. So when we come back, it'll be bottom of all at their own 35-yard line. People come in here and... Well, we're back. After there's the split screen. Mike McCormick and Dan Reeves. Danny Reeves is a man on a mission. 11 years with the Cowboys. He's got a lot of work to do here. The players love him. Off the first interception of the season by Bruce Laird, take over. Randy McMillan, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, stopped by that front three of Barney Chavis, Ruben Carter, and Rulon Jones. It's a three yard advance, second and seven for Baltimore. Broncos are up for this one. They want to be tested. They want to check out these two young running backs. I think they're going to have a pretty good day. Nose tackle, Reuben Carter, may be one of the best in all of football. Oakland and Seattle are no score in the first quarter. And they are still working on the lines to try to bring that game to those of you who were expecting it. Again, it's McMillan. And we're told Mark Van Egan of the and Raiders was carried off the field. It's said to be a hamstring injury, and we'll keep you posted. Ruben Connor on the stop of Randy McMillan. You know, while we see number 51 there, Bob Swenson, he doesn't think too much of the tight ends of the Colts today. That might be an interesting story in itself. All right, and there is the uh, Baltimore Colt offensive line. Griffin, Pratt, Donaldson, Huff, and Hart. Ray Butler, Roger Connor. Receivers, the rain is coming down out here at mile high in Denver. Rick Jones to put it up. And he's got Carr for a first down out near the 40 yard line. Aaron Kyle, the veteran right quarterback, covering on the play. Coach McCormick has said all week maybe we throw to Roger Carr just a little too much. Just a basic pattern, one on one against Aaron Kyle. He's down about 17 yards and it's a perfect pass. Last week against Buffalo, Carr caught four, but it was all too late. Buffalo well in front of that time. Denver Broncos in a 3-4. You saw the front three, the linebackers outstanding. Swenson, Evans, Gratishar, and Jackson. Here's McMillan again. Hit back behind the line by the free safety, Steve Foley. Steve Foley is one of the better tacklers in the league. One of his problems, Marv, and it, it hurt him last year against Earl Campbell. He puts his head in there, and sometimes he gets his bell rung. And Foley, of course, much more comfortable since making the move back to his uh, natural position of free safety. It was an outstanding move by the Broncos, putting him into safety. Final score, Miami over Houston, 16-10. to So Miami now 3-0. Cleveland defeating Cincinnati 20-17. First win of the season for the Cleveland Browns. Cincinnati now two up and one down. It is a second and nine for the Colts of the Denver 39. Looking for Butler, nearly picked off by Kyle. And had touchdown written all over it if the ball would have been thrown. All over it. Kyle dropped one there. They were lucky. Burt's looking for it all the way. He's just straight down the field. He, he sees the defense they're in. Look at that. That's a touchdown. Burt missed one there. Jones on the underthrow of Ray Butler. There's Aaron Kyle. He and Perry Smith have been rotating this season, uh, sometimes in every series. This is an interesting offense Baltimore runs. It's the very same offense we Eubank ran way back with the Jets. It's the same offense. It is a third and nine at the Denver 39. The time and it's picked off Gratishaw, but a penalty marker down. A flag is down. That's why Randy's all pro, all world in Denver. He's always on the spot. Let's see who it's against. Looks like it's against Denver. I see now Randy Gratishaw is cheering. It's good for Ferenc. Offense number 27 refused. Called on running back Curtis.
little sticky. What's your reaction to Randy Gratish out here? Denver's number one several years ago. MVP in the AFC. Look at that. Perfect position by Randy Gratish, our number 53. So the Denver Broncos will take over. We have no score, seven minutes remaining in this first quarter. Back in Denver, Colorado, Marv Albert along with Jim Turner. Randy Gratishar picking off his first interception of the season of the Broncos take over at midfield. A tremendous pick, but both quarterbacks are getting a lot of time. Both quarterbacks have made a mistake early in the game. Okay, both have been intercepted. Burt Jones picked off by Gratishar, and Craig Morton picked off by Laird. David Moses to the right. Steve Watson up top. in motion. Again, lots of time for Morton. Look out. He had the time. But the Colts able to get to the quarterback. Mark, we see some of the problem with the 17-year veteran. He's, and he's a great veteran. We'll see him drop back. He's not mobile. Another extra step or one less operation on those legs. Maybe he could have gotten out of this. Watch this. He only drops back seven, and he stays at seven. Works his way back up to six. Look, at he should be able to move. Nice play. But Craig should have been able to get out of that one. And it was Herb Orvis who has replaced the injured Mike Barnes at left defensive tackle who got to the quarterback, Craig Morton, second and 17 from the 43. A deeper drop now by Morton. And unleashes one. Too far. Easily picked off by Brazil. Here's Larry Brazil. He fumbles. And it's recovered by the Broncos. What's going on? <laughs> Heads up by Ronnie Egloff. The tight end picked up the fumble. We may have a comedy of errors today, Mark. <laughs> well, that'll be on the highlight films all over the country. Nesby Glasgow. Tackle of Egloff following the fumble. Here's another look. Once again, <laughs> once again, Craig overthrows it. He has a lot of time. Very nice interception. He gets hit right there, coughs it up. Perros tackles him. Ronnie Egloff, the tight end, picks it up. It's good play by, by Egloff just to hold on to the ball. Hey, nice game for the Broncos. Yes. First and 10 <laughs> at the Baltimore 32 yard line. <laughs> this is Preston. to the 25-yard line. It'll be a second and two for Denver. Jim Plunkett has scored on a 13-yard run. Six minutes in, first quarter, so the Oakland Raiders now lead the Seattle Seahawks 7-0. Seattle's hanging in pretty well this year. Well, they broke the jinx at home. They were finally able to come up with a victory, beating Denver last week. And the last time they had won a game there was against Denver in 1979. Call that well. Yes, my last game. Rick Burrows found a hole on the left side. And Denver with the first down. Ed Smith, the middle linebacker. Second year pro out of Vanderbilt who has replaced Ed Simonini on the stop of Burrows. I'll tell you, that play worked because of the blocking of Tommy Glassick and number 73, Kelvin Clark. Nice run by the youngster out of Utah State, Rick Paris, but it was a good blocking by Glassick and Clark up front. Five minutes remaining, first quarter, no score. We've had a series of turnovers in this first quarter. Denver first down at the Baltimore 16-yard line. It's really strange that at, at Craig's size, six foot four, that he has so many during his career tipped at the line of scrimmage. And we'll see this one tipped right at the line of scrimmage by Bubba Green. It's a very, very good reaction by a man that size. For the third time this first quarter, he's been sacked once. He's been intercepted three times. It was Bubba Green, the right defensive tackle, a rookie 
out of North Carolina State who deflected that last pass and then picked it off as, he were, as if he were going to the backboards. The Bronco offense is trying to make this young Baltimore Colt defense look good today. And as a first and 10 at the 25 of Baltimore. Dickey getting the call for the first time out near the 30-yard line. Rulon Jones makes the stop. Check of the scoreboard. Pittsburgh Steelers have walloped the New York Jets 38-10, to and you have to wonder about your former ball club and the coaching future of Walt Michaels. Jets are now 0-3. Mercy. That captures it. <laughs> Atlanta over San Francisco, so the Falcons are now 3-0. It's Dickey. Picks up the first down. Curtis Dickey. Second year man out of Texas A&M. Run out by Larry Evans and Steve Foley. And Dickey, like McMillan, held in check last week by Buffalo. Held to 35 yards on 14 carries by the Bills a week ago. World-class sprinter. 4.26 in the 40. First down at the 38-yard line. Look at that St. Louis, Washington final score. Cardinals 40, Redskins 30. That's old AFL. Good for them. <laughs> Jones was looking deep and had his arm deflected. Randy McCullough, the intended receiver, actually a secondary receiver. Barney Chavis getting to Burt Jones. Tremendous pressure by the, the uh, Barney Chavis and Ru Rulon Jones, Reuben Carter. They're going to a four-man line now. Greg Point, their designated rusher, number 77, is in the game. There's another final, Minnesota over Detroit. So the Vikings with their first victory of the season. And there is that final we mentioned, St. Louis 40 and Washington 30. Jones, one for four, 18 yards. He's been intercepted once. Second and 10 at the Baltimore 38. Curtis Dickey picking his way beautifully out to the 43-yard line. It'll set up a third and five. Billy Thompson, strong safety. 13-year pro out of Maryland State making the stop. Billy Thompson has the longest amount of years of longevity for any Bronco, Marv. 13 years. He's had quite a career. Billy Thompson with an interception last week against Seattle, one against Oakland the previous week. 38 career interceptions. Third and five for Jones. He had to unleash quickly. Big rush by the Broncos. Curtis Dickey, the intended receiver, but really never got downfield. It was a blitz by Gratishar. Jones just threw it away. I think we'll take another look at it and see how it happened. Randy, they told us before the game that they were going to blitz this line. Look at Randy goes scot-free. Nobody touches him. Burt's got to throw it away. Nice play by Gratishar. And so the Colts in punt formation with Mike Garrett. At his 27 yard line, Mike out of the University of Georgia, 24 years old, and he will punt to Wade Manning. Manning back at his 12. And the Colts get the good roll inside the 10. Perfect placement of the football on a punt. 255 remaining in this first quarter. Baltimore and Denver are scoreless. Scramble caused the Jets to scramble. Can the Colts Jones break Miami's boat? Can Seattle Zorn make the Chiefs look warm? Next Sunday. Again, we apologize to those of you who were expecting to see Seattle at Oakland. Of course, we're delighted to have you with us. And because of telephone line problems, you will see the Baltimore Denver game if they are able to correct things. We'll switch to Seattle Oakland first and ten for Denver back at the eight yard line. Rick Farrell stopped by Herb Orvis, the left defensive tackle. 49 yard punt by Mike Garrett to pin the Broncos. 
deep. This crowd has been on the quiet yeah. side here to they, this point, Jim. Marv, they want offense. They haven't had offense here for three years. I don't even think the fans care if there's a loss here as long as the score is 35-31. <laughs> the old AFL days. These are AFL fans. They want action. Well, Craig Morton's had a tough time in this first quarter. He has already been intercepted three times. Again, it's Paros going wide out of bounds across the 15-yard line, knocked out by the middle linebacker, number 52, Ed Smith. It's interesting to see Rick Paris in the backfield with Dave Preston or, or Tony Reed. You have, in effect, what they call a pony backfield. There's only one true prototype fullback on this ball club, and that's Larry Canada, and he plays very, very little. Canada has only carried the ball one time for one yard. That has been it. It is a third and three for Denver. 15-yard line, 210 left, first quarter, no score. has been a favorite receiver of Craig Morton. He's been the favorite player, the favorite special teamer, and a favorite receiver for three years here in Denver. He's just Mr. Everything. Nothing flashy, but very few mistakes. Dave Preston out of Bowling Green. Coming into today's game, Craig Morton only 125 yards short of a magic number, 25,000 total yards. That's a lot of yards. Last week he passed by Bart Starr. This is Paros. Nice move. Able to weave his way for some extra yardage. You know, Marv, I like this offense. The fans in Denver and the Intermountain region here are a little antsy. They want to see scores as we've talked about. But I think that what Danny Reeves is doing, he doesn't have that total talent. I, I really, I, you know, we see 75,000 people here. They supported for 82 straight games. It's going to take time to install the Dallas philosophy. Number one, you have to have personnel to play the Dallas type of game. They do not have it here. The obvious need, the explosive back. This man, uh, Mr. Reeves, would like that. Rick Paros across the 45 for a first down. Derek Hatchett making the stop once again. Hatchett coming up from left quarterback. It's gratifying to see Paris. He was hurt on the first day of scrimmage last year in preseason. They had high hopes for him. All winter long, all season, he had to suffer through whether he was going to make it or not. When they changed ownership and coaches, he didn't know. I like what I see out of that youngster. Rick Paris averaging four yards per carry. Picked up the first out of the 46 of Denver. And his poses peeling off. Here's Preston. for the first down marker, but stacked up by Laird and Glasgow. A nice move by Dave Preston. One interesting note, we've mentioned it before, Baltimore's going to the three-man line, which they haven't played in the first two games. Just a simple cutback done on Dave's abilities. You must run right at a three-man line. So Dave Preston near the first down marker, the breaking out the yard sticks, will be back in just a moment. Now there's a place where they have... Albert and Jim Turner, first quarter complete, no score. Somewhere out there on the airwaves is the Seattle-Oakland game. Somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully, AT&T will be able to solve the problem. And for that portion of the audience expecting Seattle-Oakland, we hope to bring it to you later on. Oakland leading 7-0 in the first quarter. Penalty marker down. Tony Reed getting the call. This is the problem when you go to the shift, the split, the tight end motion. One of the players is always going to jump. Tony Reed, that time was his, number 32. An interesting trade they made for Tony Reed. One of the best pass catchers in football at the halfback position. Reed did pick up the first down, but a penalty marker throw. Illegal motion, offense, number 24, second down. Rick Paros. Call for the penalty. And a second and about five at midfield. A look at the first quarter statistics. Broncos with the decisive edge on the ground and in the air. And 
also in terms of possession of the football. Carroll's trying to slip through. He was able to beat one man, Hosea Taylor, and then swarmed on Herb Orvis, leading the assault. And we're told Mark Van Egan did suffer a pulled hamstring injury, will not return to the Oakland Raider lineup. McCormick in his second year as head man in Baltimore. This club had a shot to make the playoffs last year in the playoff chase. Dropped their last three games, finished at 7 and 9. Morton again with time. Tony Reed, nice stutter step. First down and more. And livens him up. A little bit of action. That's what they want. Larry Brazil making the stop. So first down for Denver. Right now, let's go to an update. Here's Brian Gumbel at NFL 81. Okay, Marv, thank you. At Arrowhead Stadium, the Chiefs have scored again. Set up by unusual play. Watch this one. Into the arms of Henry Marshall. He loses the handle, but Stan Rome saves the day and gets it in close. It's 35-28. Thank you, Brian. First and 10 for the Denver Broncos at the Baltimore 42-yard line. Morton able to hook up with Tony Reed. This is Parrott. Let's go to Brian Gubble at our studios in New York. Okay, Marv, here's what that play set up. This is Billy Jackson from four yards out going off the right side. That's the touchdown that made it 35-28. Marv? And back in Denver, Colorado, a second and seven for the Broncos at the Baltimore 39-yard line. We are early second quarter. Denver and Baltimore are scoreless. Rick Paros now seven carries, 34 yards. The play action, Morton able to complete to Riley Odoms and another Denver first down. Krause and Smith in on the tackle. There's the man they've been looking for a couple of times earlier during the interceptions. Riley is one of the better premier tight ends in all of football. They call people all world this and that. Riley gets the job done. In this offense, with the talent on this ball club, they have to go to number 88, Riley Odoms, more and more. Time running a smooth drive, first down at the 28-yard line. Morton was intercepted, though, three times in the first quarter. Preston trying to change direction. Nothing. Good defense by the Baltimore Colts. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with the size of some of those Colt defensive linemen. There's Darrell Wilkerson who made the tackle. He goes 6'4", 255. Hosea Tello, 6'5", 250. Bubba Green, 6'4", 278. Mike Ozdowski, 6'5", 243. Colorado product Herb Orvis, 6'5", 255. Herb played his ball not 15 miles from here at CU, Colorado University in Boulder. Second and 10 at the Baltimore 28-yard line. Precise patterns. This is what Morton wants. You see, Craig, just a simple drop back. Good protection. He steps into the pocket. Very nice pattern. Very nice catch by number 81, Steve Watson. And for first and 10 at the Baltimore 11. Watson left. Moses right. Carlos inside the 10 yard line. Strong safety, Bruce Laird making the stop. Two-yard advance. So the Broncos now second and eight. This is the area last week where the Broncos caused themselves a lot of pain and injury here. Penalties, holding penalties, took them out of field goal range, took them out of scoring effort, and they lose the game 13 to 10. Den Denver coming in at one up and one down. Same for the Baltimore Colts. Frank Morton is eight for 12 for 93 yards. Tony Reed off the right side. Mark, that's a good call down there in the 
defensive set that ball towers in. A quick trap, you see if you call the 32 trap here in Denver, just a quick, simple handoff right over the center. Whatever way Billy Bryant goes, the back follows him right straight up the hole. That's a good call down in there. And it sets up a third and six at the seven yard line. Now reach of the sidelines, Preston returns. Preston and Paros are the running backs. Watson right and Moses left. done by number 19, Freddie Steinfer. Defense Baltimore Colts. loves that. Baltimore Colts will take over at their 20-yard line. The Denver Drive, 15 plays, 92 yards. And Craig Morton is only 25 yards away from 25,000 for his career. To this point, similar to a week ago, Baltimore's offense having trouble. Marv Albert, Jim Turner, Denver, Colorado. Denver Broncos with a 7-0 lead. Six minutes gone by in the second quarter. A second and nine for the Colts at their 21-yard line. The running backs are Curtis Dickey and Randy McMillan. football. We'll take another look at it. Burt Jones is trying to read him off. They're trying to set up a simple screen by letting everybody go downfield and Randy doesn't buy it. Look at him. He's running over. The blocker can't take him. It's a dangerous man. He just tackled one-on-one. -on -one. Perfect play by Gratishaw. And you saw number 77, Greg Boyd, rushing Burt Jones. It forced Jones to give up the football. You know, the defense is aware of the explosiveness of Butler and Carr, McMillan and everybody, and, and Jones. But they're playing them tight. As a third and ten. Look out. Mishandle on the snap. And Jones in trouble. Just looking to get rid of the football and the crowd reacting. They want to see the call on Jones, but they will not get it. <laughs> he was throwing it into the East Stands. <laughs> he was very lucky. We're going to see this bobble snap. They're very lucky that he uh, maintained control of this ball. Look at it. It's free. Latimer's got his eyes on it. Burt did a nice job there, just throwing the ball away and letting the punt team come in and punt it away. So the Denver defense looking awesome here in the first half. The rain coming down again here at mile high in Denver. Mike Garrett back at his five-yard line. No snap. And this is Manning. First. 
to the 45. A good return. Dallas Hickman hitting him down. And so Denver will take over. 57-yard punt. And look at this 22-yard return by Wade Manning. Seven and a half remaining in this first. These folks undercover. These fans aren't going to go anywhere. They've been through rain, snow. They just want to see action. The great fans. First out at the 45-yard line for the Denver Broncos. They lead 7-0. Again, Morton had time, and it has ruled incomplete. Odoms not able to hang on. SB Glasgow covering on the play. Let's go back to Brian Gumbel in New York. Well, Marv, trying to protect a seven-point lead in Kansas City. The Chargers have come up with a big interception. Kenny right here is intercepted by Bob Gregor, and the Chargers are in possession of the ball. And a seven-point lead, it's 35-28 in the fourth. Marv? Thank you, Brian. Denver Broncos with a 7-0 lead by virtue of the touchdown pass. Morton to the tight end run. Egloff for seven yards off a sustained drive by the Broncos that consumed almost nine minutes. This time, Morton completes to Odoms for a first down at the Baltimore 42-yard line. The free safety, Nesby Glasgow, covering. The Bronco coaches up here in the booth have seen that they can't cover Riley Odoms, number 88, one-on-one. -on -one. Morton's just going to have a field day. Esby Glasgow, Bruce Laird on the deep bat, and Derek Hatchin and Larry Brazil are at the corners. The linebackers, Kraus, Smith, and Woods, and up front, Wilkerson, Orvis, Green, and Ozdowski. They spot it at the 41, first down for Denver. Jim, was that a mix-up or by design? No, that was by design, Marv. That was a, a fake pitch and an inside quick trap to uh, Peros. I thought it was a good play. Nice blocking. Ed Smith making the stop. Fourth quarter, San Diego in another shootout leading Kansas City. 35-28. Scores have been ballooning all afternoon. Chicago over Tampa Bay in the fourth quarter, 21-17. Oakland on the 13-yard run by Plunkett in front of Seattle, 7-0. Second and five for Morton. Nice pattern by Preston, cutting from the sideline toward the middle. Once again, Marv, we see Preston's versatility. He moved out to the flanker back, just a quick slot throw in to, uh, to him from Morton. Watch it. Uh, Morton's going to look at it all the way. He's trying to read the safety off. He sees Preston, throws it right in. Craig should be reaching his 125 yards here pretty soon. He is creeping up. Bruce Laird made the stop on Preston. It's a first down. Seventh reception of the day for Dave Preston. Denver at the Baltimore 25-yard line. That's Moses in motion. He's got a man wide open, but overthrows by the Odoms. And the crowd reacting. Esby Glasgow putting Odoms down, but that toss was considerable margin. The flag isn't dropped because they consider the ball uncatchable. If the ball would have been a little closer, Glasgow would have had the flag dropped on him. I think we see once again Riley Odoms is the man to watch today. Green Bay over Los Angeles, 7-0. It could be a must-win situation for Ray Malavesi. Pat Hayden, we're told, was injured, and Jeff Rutledge has come on. We have 5.20 remaining in this first half here in Denver. Broncos lead 7-0, second and 10 at the Baltimore 26. That Baltimore defense spending a lot of time on the field. Steve Watson inside the 20. Mike Woods, the right side linebacker, making the tackle. Watch it, Morton. Look at him. He's just over, taking an overview of the whole situation. Good blocking. A quick out pass to Watson. He gains about six or seven yards. But you're right. That defense is keeping him on the field. And that was the last pass for Craig Morton. He has over 25,000 for his career. He took over the number 15 spot of total career yards last week, passing by Mark Starr. And the ovation for the crowd. Third and three and Morton able to complete for the first down. Tony Reed. The 
receiver, but a penalty marker is down. And we understand that those of you who were scheduled to see the Oakland Pass Seattle game. Offense number 81. Steve Watson called for that penalty on pass interference. Those of you who were expecting to see Seattle and Oakland are back with us. We're delighted to have you with us, but I, I know that uh, the folks expecting Seattle and Oakland were looking to see the Seahawks and the Raiders, so please bear with us. There is a telephone line problem, and we are hoping to repair it as soon as possible to bring the Seattle-Oakland game back to those of you who were expecting it. We mentioned it before, when the Broncos get in scoring distance, you know, their opportunities are diminished because of the mistakes and the penalties, and there's another example. Sets this back to a third, and 13 at the 29, Morton out of the shotgun. Looking for Watson. Stein for Prestridge holding. Four minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Denver leading Baltimore. 14 nothing. We'll be back in a moment. On the move, check this pass out from Kenny to JT Smith. A 13 yard zipper. Kansas City on the move. Now let's go back to Marv Albert and Jim Turner in Denver. And there is Craig Morton, who is 13 for 19, 159 yards. Past that milestone of 25,000. So after a rocky start, he's come back. This is Anderson. A hard hit as he makes his way to the 20-yard line. Kim Anderson in the second year out of Arizona State. Stopped by Wade Manning, who really rocked him. Good coverage. Excellent coverage. That's what happens when you get the ball down that deep on a kickoff. Nice kickoff by Freddie to the goal line. Baltimore Colts first down at their 20-yard line. That last Denver drive, 55 yards, seven plays. It took three minutes, 14 seconds. Capped off by the 29-yard touchdown pass to Steve Watson. Jones, the quarterback. Dickey and McMillan, the running backs. It was out of bounds. Roger Carr, who likes to play the sideline, was clearly out of bounds, so it will be a second and ten as Carr was covered by Perry Smith, the right quarterback. He wanted to throw it straight up the sloop there to Curtis Dickey, but Gratisher had him all the way. If they ever get uh, Curtis Dickey loose, it's going to be amazing to see how fast he really is. The backers are not going to let him loose today. Dickey and McMillan coming off games in which they were held in check by Buffalo after the explosive start of the opener of that surprise victory in New England. Burt Jones is now two for eight, only 17 yards. This is McMillan. Could not make the turn again. Good coverage by Denver. It's a veteran defense. I think we should say one thing. In defense of Baltimore showing so far, they are a very young ball club playing against an outstanding defense in the NFL. The average age of the Baltimore roster is only 25 years old. And there's the man running the Baltimore Colts, Mike McCormick. 25 years of experience as a player and coach. One of the great offensive tackles in the game. Uh, with the Cleveland Browns blocking for a fellow by the name of Jim Brown for some six years. Third and seven at the 24. And so the Baltimore Colts will be forced to punt. Again, Roger Carr, the intended receiver. And the Colts have not been able to mount the drive. This Denver defense that is hearing it from the crowd. 
Manning showed some shades of Rick Upchurch on the last punt return. See what he does this time. I would not punt the ball directly to a single safety. I'd punt it to the sidelines and make him stretch a little bit. Don't allow him to have the entire field to run it back. And Dan Reeves had not been satisfied with the blocking on the uh, kickoff and punt return game. This is Manning. And the Colts are able to down it. Number 66, back up center, Chris Foote, who played his high school football here at Fairview High School in Denver. Penalty marker down, it's against Baltimore. It's interesting, in the last three years, Baltimore's had two free agent punters from Georgia. Bucky Diltz, who used to be a Denver Bronco, and now Garrett. Georgia's had some good punters, good kicking game. And that is uh, one area that Mike McCormick feels he has straight now. The Baltimore Colts not known, as you are well aware, for their kicking game uh, these past few years. Several years it had been, they've been the worst in the league. It's one of the very tough stadiums and divisions to kick in because you have to go to New England, Shea Stadium. Ineligible man downfield, kicking team number 79, fourth down. The ineligible man downfield was Vanderveer. So that 49-yard punt has been erased. And now Garrett is back inside his five-yard line. Mark Hangtime, beauty. This is Manning. So a short return by Manning across the 35-yard line. Three minutes remaining in this first half. Denver Broncos leading the Baltimore Colts by the score of 14-0. Now back to Denver. Thank you, Byron. First down at the 37-yard line for the Denver Broncos following that 57-yard punt by Mike Garrett. Craig Morton, the quarterback. Preston and Paros are the running backs. That's Moses in motion. Swing for Preston. Again, his third juggling act of the day, but that time it cost. And Smith hitting him for the loss. Right here we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KOA TV, Channel 4 in Denver. at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Marv Albert along with Jim Turner. Denver now second and 18 back at their 29-yard line. Two and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Greg Morton with two touchdown passes to the tight end Egloff to wide receiver Watson after he was intercepted three times in the first quarter. This is Powell's trying to pick his way through. As he has gang tackled Herb Orvis, Mike Ozdowski, Bruce Laird, all the time. Can you believe the difference in the total offense already? Denver 218 yards. Overall, Baltimore with only 47 thus far. Two-minute warning has been provided. A third and 15 is coming up now for the Broncos. Back at their 32-yard line. The test. Schlitz versus Bud. Loyal Bud. It'll be a third and 15 at the 32 for Denver. And they have a new right guard, Glenn Hyde, the six-year pro out of Pittsburgh, has replaced Paul Howard, who just uh, left off. So it's Clark and Studdard at the tackles, Glassick and Hyde at the guards, and Bryan at center. sack of the afternoon for the Baltimore Colts. That time a short setup by Craig Morton and he's hauled down by Mike Barnes and Herb Orvis. Let's go back to New York for NFL 81. Thank you very much, Mario Alberts. In Oakland, Jim Plunkett having some problems, but the Seahawks are playing a little keep away. Watch this play. Ken Easley bats his ball into the arms of his teammate John Harris. Harris on the return. In the second quarter, with less than two minutes remaining, 7-3 Oakland. Now let's go back to Mar. 
Thank you, Byron. As we take a look at the second sack of the day by the Baltimore Colts. It's just a simple tackle, tackle in uh, stunt there, but the change of the offensive lineman putting Glenn Hyde in in place of Paul Howard hurts because he's not used to it, and that's probably the result for that sack. So Denver in punt formation. Luke Prestridge, the three-year veteran out of Baylor, will drop back, and I see the Colts are going with Kim Anderson instead of Dave Shula, who is usually back in uh, single safety. Dave, now they make a switch. They had Anderson, now Shula comes on. Shula has looked on the tentative side over the first uh, couple of games. He, of course, the son of Don Shula, and the Colts will be facing the Miami Dolphins next week. Now, what do you think Mrs. Shula is going to be feeling? <laughs> Rooting very hard for her son. What a thrill it must be for Don, his wife, and even young David. Dave, a rookie free agent pickup out of Dartmouth, the youngest member of the Colts. He is some nine months younger than Randy and McMillan, both are 22. This is a situation Luke Prestwich likes to punt from because he has the whole field to nail the ball. Let's see what he does. A little low. Uh, here's Shula. Nice moves by Shula to bring to the 40, but a penalty marker down. And it looks like the Colts are upset. 40-yard punt by Prestridge. Good return by Shula. Bumped out by the punter Prestridge. I think we're going to see the obvious penalty, and that's always a clip on a punt return. David does a good job of picking up whatever blockers he has. There's one. That might have been it right there. Head behind the back on Larry Brazil. Oh, Luke hit him. Look at that. Look at that specialist hitting the runner. I love that. We have an illegible man, Don Field, on the kicking team, number 58. We have illegal you block above the waist from the rear, number 26 on the return. They will disqualify each other and will play the down over. So it's called on Kim Anderson of Baltimore and Steve Busick, backup linebacker of Denver. The illegal use of the hands above the waist is... We had said earlier the Packers had not allowed any points in the first half this year. They haven't allowed any. They've just given them away. Watch this. The Packers are down low. Now, the Denver Bronco game. We are at Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum, where the Seattle Seahawks have just missed a 40-yard field goal attempt. We have a minute 10 remaining in the second period with Oakland in front, 7-3. to three. Jack Patera, a man who a year ago could not buy a victory. Lost all of their games at home. But they lost five of those games, I think, going into the last three minutes, and they were ahead times. That's unusual. And they were ahead of some pretty good football team, namely the Oakland Raiders and the Philadelphia Eagles. Speaking of the Raiders, here's Jim Plunkett on first and ten. And as Jensen picks up about four yards before he's knocked down by Keith Simpson, the cornerback, fourth-year man out of Memphis State. We take a look at number 31, Derek Jensen, as he goes back. I'm sure he's a lot busier today than he thought he was going to be. Jim Turner 
Arizona, back in Denver, Colorado. We apologize for the line trouble. And we are back with you. Curtis Dickey, the intended receiver, as Burt Jones tried to hit him along the sideline. Randy Gratishaw covering on the play. So the Baltimore Colts now have a third and ten back at their 35-yard line. A minute and 16 remaining in this first half. And Denver leading it by the score of 14-0 on two touchdown pass plays. Morton to the tight end, Egloff, and Morton to wide receiver, Watson. Those are not happy statistics for Burt Jones. And Jones is spun around by Ruben Carter. First sack of the day for the orange crush defense of the Denver Broncos. Broncos just called timeout. They want to milk this punt. We'll see it again. They're in an unbalanced line. Attack, attack, a stunt. Rulon joins going out to the left. Burt doesn't have too much time. Look at he's stepping in. Reuben Carter, it's the first sack of the day. Minute 10 remaining, first half, we'll be right back. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by Ed Simonini and the National Football League. So, punting situation, Mike Garrett back at his 15-yard line, a minute 10 remaining in this first half, and the Broncos leave the Colts 14-0. Good hang time. This is Manning. Manning across the 35-yard line. Once again, another outstanding punt. His hang time is great. He hit that one for 43 yards. He hit one for 57, one for 46, and one for 49. A very nice pickup by the Baltimore Colts and Mike Garrett. Brian Daru covering on the play, making the tackle on Wade Manning. So Denver now first and 10 from their 37. That's the final score. Chicago defeating Tampa Bay 28-17. We have one minute remaining in this first half. The swing pass for Tony Reed. Beautiful move by Reed. Tony Reed stutter stepping and dipping and dancing his way to the 49-yard line before Glasgow finally hauled him down. That's exactly why the Broncos gave up two draft choices for Tony Reed at Kansas City. He's in the best hands. Look at the move. In and out. Makes a great diving effort here. He picks up a first down just on the dive, jumping forward. We'll see it right there. Tony Reed. So a first down at the 49-yard line, and a timeout has been called with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. I have the feeling the Broncos are going to try to set up a field goal here. They want to go in with one more score. Coming up at halftime, NFL 81, a rundown of what is going on around the National Football League. It's been a day of high scores. After the Denver Broncos, 14 points in the first half has to be considered a high score. 14 points all season. They haven't scored yet. <laughs> Putting it up, Marv. That's what they should have done, been doing all along, and it looks good. It looks good to the fans also. We're told that Paul Howard, Denver's right guard, injured his right foot. He was replaced earlier this second quarter by Glenn Hyde. Baltimore has had possession of the football only two minutes and 48 seconds worth in the second quarter. Colts 
16-yard line. 22 seconds, as you see, left. In this first half, Rob Lytle has come on for the first time. Penalty marker again. Preston, the intended receiver. Lesko covering, but a flag down. It's against the Broncos. Clock shows 17 seconds. Remaining in this first half, Broncos would love to go back into the dressing room with some more points on the board. They lead it 14-0. They have dominated that Baltimore defensive unit has been on the field most of this first half. Illegal motion. Offense number 46. First down. Dave Preston, the guilty party for the illegal motion. People sometimes misinterpret what's happening to a defense when they're out there that long. They're going to make mistakes. They're tired. The offense hasn't helped them at all today. It is back to a first and ten at the 21-yard line. Morton is 16 for 22 now, 193 yards. Off the double pump. It is picked off by Brazil and will stay right there. That's the fourth interception. see that Haven Moses broke his pattern. He saw that it was covered inside. He wanted to stop to break back out. And Craig threw it. It was a time pattern. He's supposed to be to see Haven where he stopped. This just happens. Sometimes a lack of communication early in the year. And a big play for the Baltimore Colts. Keeps him right in it with 10 seconds remaining in this first half. A score here would have been devastating. Well, it does take away what I consider a sure three points away from the Broncos, and that hurts them. Only 10 seconds left. McMillan, 25, 30. First down for Randy McMillan, but time has run out in this first half. So that's the end of the first half here in Denver. With the score, the Denver Broncos 14 and the Baltimore Colts nothing. Back with our halftime in a moment. Championship games, plus continuing coverage of NFL football action, beginning with Brian Gumbel and NFL 81. That's all an outstanding October on NBC Sports. Back at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado, Marv Albert and Jim Turner. It has been domination by the Broncos over the Baltimore Colts over the first half. Denver leading it 14-0 on touchdown passes from Craig Morton for seven yards to the tight end, Ron Egloff for 29 yards to wide receiver Steve Watson. It's been a bizarre first half for Morton, who went over the 25,000 career yardage mark, but has been intercepted four times, three in the first quarter. Yet the overall stats, and these are unofficial show Morton at 16 for 22 for 193 yards so Morton has had his ups and downs total domination let's give credit to that offensive line of the Broncos the nice patterns that the receivers are running I think they could do whatever they want to do today with this young and very tired Baltimore defense 16 first downs have been picked up thus far by the Denver Broncos only two by the Baltimore Colts Burt Jones having a tough time the Baltimore offense has seen very little time in the first half. It has been all Denver to this point. Halftime, Broncos 14, and the Colts nothing. Right now, let's go back to New York for an update on scores from around the National Football League. Let's go to NFL 81 in New York. I'd like to welcome all of you back to our NFL 81 studios in New York. I'm Bryant Gumbel. We're working our way down through the third Sunday of this NFL season, trying to get you caught up on the scores and highlights, all the action from around the league today. A pair of unbeatens went at it in the Astrodome today. They were the Dolphins and the Oilers. The Dolphins emerged victorious. They're now 3-0. The Oilers dropped to 2-1. Great ball game. Final in that one, 16-10. Don Shula, well, his team's supposed to be rebuilding, but it's way, way ahead of schedule. Earl Campbell in this ball game had only 19 carry 78 yards you see him there but he worked very hard on this nine yard run shows you just how much talent he has he still played with a bit of a bruised shoulder he was hampered a little bit today the score was three to nothing dolphins on in front when kenny stabler took to the air hit double zero kenny burrow 71 yard hookup moved houston in front seven three but it was the dolphins who came back late in the ball game trailing 10-9 don schrock into the arms of andre franklin a three yard touchdown it was enough to push the dolphins over the top final again 16-10 
The Cleveland Browns finally got one in the win column. They went to Cincinnati today and turned back the heretofore undefeated Bengals. Final in that ball game was 20 to 17. Brian Seid finally solved the offensive problems that had been plaguing the Browns. This was their first touchdown in eight quarters. Seid to Ozzie Newsome, four-yard hookup. It pushed the Browns in front 13-3. Bengals came back strong. Kenny Anderson up top, 42 yards into the arm of rookie Chris Collinsworth out of Florida. That made it 13-10. But then Mike Pruitt off the right side, an 11-yard touch. Touchdown, boosted it up to 2010. Bengals came back one more time. Interference call sent him up with a one. Pete Johnson over the left side, 2017, but it was too little, too late. Browns a winner, 20 to 17. How bad are the New York Jets? They're 0-3. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat up on them today. Final in that ball game, 38 to 10. For a beleaguered coach, Walt Michaels, it may well have been his last game as coach of the Jets. A lot of people speculating he's on his way out. Certainly, Terry Bradshaw and company didn't make his Sunday a very pleasant one. Russell Davis, you see him scoring right there. Here's Frank Pollard going untouched for 23 of 24 yards. This helped the Jets into a 17-0 lead. They led it 17-3 at the half. Terry Bradshaw going over from the one. It wasn't until late in the ball game Jets were able to get anything on the board. Pat Ryan to Freeman McNeil, but it was 38-10 final. Long, long ride home for the Jets from Pittsburgh. San Francisco against Atlanta. The Falcons go 3-0. That is their best start ever. They beat the 49ers fun in that ball game 34-17. Steve Bartkowski, 3 Three touchdown passes. Rick Danmeyer's field goal from 19 yards out with just four seconds left pushed the Vikings past the Lions 26 to 24. Both of those clubs are now one and two. Washington against St. Louis. Greatest day ever for Joe Theismann. 388 yards and four touchdowns, but it wasn't enough. The Cardinals beat him by a score of 40 to 30. Get out the computers for two of the NFL's worst. San Diego against Kansas City. This one's still in progress. In the fourth period, the Chargers are out in front of the Chiefs by a score of 42 to 31. Both of these these clubs came into the games as unbeaten, and that man, Bill Kenny, had been a winner in four or five starts. But it was Mr. Fouts who's been flashing his stuff with three touchdown passes. One of those into the arms of rookie James Brooks out of Auburn, 29-yard strike. This helped the Chargers into a 14-7 lead. When Ted Knight went over for his second touchdown, it was 28-21. But Billy Jackson got that one back right away, four yards. That made it 35-28. And then watch this play. This is the one that has helped the Chargers score their last touchdown. Kenny. It Winds up into the arms of Leroy Jones. He laterals back to Big Hands Johnson. Even Big Hands can take it two yards. Pushes the Chargers up into the lead by a score of 42-31. Chicago, a winner over Tampa Bay, 28-17. Just 64 yards and 21 carries for Walter Payton. As you know, Oakland out in front of Seattle at the half. In that ball game, it is 13-3. Plunkett has thrown for one touchdown and run for another. Denver at Mile High Stadium playing great defense and getting some surprisingly good offense. Beating up on the Colts, 14-0. Greg Morton has thrown two touchdown passes to Steve Watson and Ron Egloff. The Rams still looking for their first win or doing it without Pat Hayden. He injured his sternum. He's been taken off for x-rays. Jeff Rutledge is in the ball game. Rams are out in front of the Packers 14-7 in the second. Also at the half this ball game, Giants are leading the Saints by a score of 10-0. We'll come back with an interview with owner Gene Klein right after this.